from the day that uh, I started Docstock and dove into the internet and decided I needed to figure out everything there was about consumer web and how to get customers in marketing, one name kept popping up, which was Shoe Money. And for those of you that uh, are familiar with Jeremy and know about him, he's got this very famous picture holding this big check that Google paid him, right? And Jeremy was one of the pioneers of affiliate marketing. And for those of you that are total newbies to affiliate marketing, we'll go over what that is and how people like Jeremy have made millions and millions of dollars from it in the, just the last couple years alone. And what he's really done is he's helped revolutionize the way that we drive customers to online products and services. And he's really been at the forefront, not only from a publicity standpoint, but from a tactical strategy marketing standpoint of helping to redefine how we market our goods and products and services. And he's one of the most open, straightforward, Middle Western, good folks that you'll ever meet. You guys are all in for a real treat tonight. So please join me in welcoming Jeremy Shoemaker at Shoe Money. Thanks, Jeremy. After you. All right, so we're going to jump in. We're going to uh, break the conversation tonight. And again, uh, tonight, Startups and Censored is really meant to be a little bit more of a teaching and training session. So we're going to not only go over Jeremy's background, but really some of the very specific things that he's done to make a lot of money, to help other people make a lot of money, um, and then break down how each of us can do the same, either as affiliate marketers ourselves, or as folks that are running companies or have a product or service where we want to leverage affiliate marketing. So you and I talked about it. We're really going to have the conversation in three parts. The first part is you know, getting to know you and your story and your background. The second are um, examples of things that you've done and other people have done extremely successfully in affiliate marketing and how that works. And then the third is you know, we'll go into really specific situations of, hey, you do X, Y, and Z in this situation, and that's how you make a lot of money. Um, so with that, let's jump in, and uh, why don't you tell everybody you know, a little bit about you and your background, Jeremy? <clears throat> sure. Thank you, Jason. And thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, so my name is Jeremy Shoemaker, um, also known as Shoe Money. I write a blog at shoemoney.com. And my story actually started um, from very humble roots. I come from a very middle-class um, Midwestern family. I barely graduated high school, have very limited college, um, pretty much just partied on campus for many years and didn't really attend many classes. So <clears throat> that's pretty much uh, my uh, education. Now, in 2000, let's see, in 2003, I started a website that was in the mobile space. And I thought, you know, it would be really cool if I could figure out a way to get an image of my wife and my dog, well, my girlfriend at the time, onto my phone. So two people important. Did you have any tech background when you say you started a website yes. in 2003? So I had, uh, in 1996, I was hired by an internet, um, uh, it was basically an internet provider. And so it was, you know, it was a local internet provider, I didn't know nothing about it. And she came in and said, you know, I was selling washers and dryers at the time at Sears. You were selling washers and dryers? This yes. This was 1996? Yes. And um, so basically she says, you know, they, we really need a Macintosh person to do support and they tell me that you're really good with the Macintosh computers. And I said, well, if you mean by really good, I can play games on them, then <laughs> I'm your guy. And so she says, well, I don't know what you make here, but I'll pay you, you know, $2 more an hour. You start tomorrow. And I said, well, you know, it'd be like 14 bucks an hour. You know? So she laughed and she said, okay, you start tomorrow. So I started and immediately I was thrown into what's you know, a Unix-based system because we all had what's called dummy terminals. So really, like, I learned how to do web hosting. You know, I was doing everything, including the Mac support was fairly minimal. I was doing more like, you know, started learning HTML, web design, small amount of uh, bash programming. And this is in 96? This would have been 96, you know, up until, I worked there until about 2000. So, um, yeah, and then I, I kind of fell into, from there I went to work for a bank as a regional, um, basically a regional tech manager. And uh, that was right when all this crazy security stuff came out, like, you know, uh, Sarbanes-Oxley was in the works and like all this other data classification stuff. So they sent me off to get all these certifications, which put me in a very good position because this was badly needed by banks. They needed somebody with these certifications. And so I got really good um, with, you know, encryption and, and just, just writing programs, you know, to detect fraudulent stuff and whatnot. 
And so I ended up um, getting a job offer from Wells Fargo to be their lead security analyst um, and start writing a lot of their security policies. And you're living in Nebraska. Um, by this time, I had moved, yeah. So, I, well, actually, I went from, I was born in Moline, Illinois, moved to Des Moines, which is Wells Fargo's headquarters for the financial division. And then <clears throat> that's where I met my now wife, girlfriend, um, while working for Wells Fargo. She moved to Omaha. Um, she was, she's a physician, was completing her anesthesia residency. And so I transferred to a bank in Omaha. Um, unfortunately, about five months after there, the bank was taken over by a, um, a Bank of the West, and they wiped out the entire IT staff. So I'm on unemployment. But I had this website, right? This is 2003. And, and do you, I mean, did you, you said you came from a middle class family, but did you have any meaningful amount of funds saved up when you started? No, I mean, you know, I was, I was probably, at this point, you know, in 2000, this was about 2005 when I finally was put on unemployment, but in, in you know, in, I was pretty much in credit card debt. I was like 30, 40,000 in credit card debt, bad debt. Um, it just was pretty bad with finances. I was 420 pounds, um, so pretty overweight, and smoked two packs of cigarettes a day, and, I mean, I was a real catch, you know, so... <laughs> So, um, <clears throat> and then I met this girl in Des Moines. And you, and you told me that you never thought you'd live past 30, right? I never did. I, I really, I was always overweight my whole life. And, you know, smoking and everything. I lived in a game called EverQuest, which was a, you know, popular, I, I lived in this game. I literally logged hours of playtime in this game over years. And I was just, I kind of eventually just became okay with the fact that I was never going to get married, never going to have kids and my life would end around 30, right? So, little did I know, I met a girl who was, had just, um, you know, was basically in her transitional year after medical school. Um, she'd already gone to Chicago School of Business, decided business wasn't for her um, after getting her MBA, then went to uh, become a doctor and was in her transitional year. And I'm just thinking, I'm so over my head dating this girl. I don't know what she saw in me, but we had just incredible conversation and we disagreed we were just going to be friends, you know, whatever, and it turned into a lot more. And so after that, you know, I lost weight, quit smoking, you know, and kind of life kind of changed, outlook on life kind of changed. All right, so let's jump into your, foray, your, your first foray into affiliate marketing. What was that? <clears throat> well, then, you know, on unemployment, right, so I had this, this mobile site, you know, and, and it became very popular. Long story short, started with wallpapers, evolved into ringtones, 2000. Five, um, How did it become popular? Did it just kind of virally catch? Or yeah, did you do so, anything so like I said, I tried to figure out a way to get wallpapers on my phones. This is way back in the days. Um, and so, I, and then I figured out that I started getting, I wrote this guide and shared it with people on how to actually do it, and it became really popular. And then people started sending me pictures to convert them for them, you know. So then I was like, you know, I think I can programmatically do this, so the website will automatically convert them for them. Did that, and then I said, you know, maybe I should let people archive them. And there was no tagging back then, but they just categorized them. Built this huge archive to where people were uploading 5,000, 10,000 pictures a day um, that were mobile ready. You would go there, it would convert them to the right size to your phone, and then give you directions on how to put it on your phone. All free. Getting about 10 to 15,000 uniques a day at that point. Um, and then when ringtones came out and the ability to load ringtones onto your phone, I just made the transition to that. So same thing, you make your, your own ringtone, you upload it, you categorize it, now it's in the database, and <clears throat> getting way even more, now ringtones just exploded the site. So the site, you know, I'm on unemployment, the site's getting about 100 and, 100 some thousand unique visitors a day. Um, I was, at least I was pretty technically sound, so I was able to do it with one server, um, just a lot of caching um, in that. So one day I get a call from a company called Google, and they say, we see that you're getting a lot of traffic in the mobile space. We have a lot of inventory for, you know, to place on those sites. And, you know, we'll give you a, what's called, what we call a premium revenue share. So I was like, whatever. And so <laughs> she's like, you know, we think you could do good. And I was like, well, how much money do you think I can make? Well, I don't know, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, and, and uh, you have to keep in mind, I'm on unemployment. I'm like, well, shit, any money's, you know, better than $400 a week than I'm getting from unemployment. <clears throat> So I implement the code, and within a couple weeks, I'm just like, holy crap, I'm doing like five to $8,000 a day, you know, from Google AdSense. And I'm just like, honey, this is kind of cool, you know? <laughs> and 
So I go to the bank. I get this hundred and thirty some thousand dollar AdSense check, and I go to the and I have it, and I have my mother, and I'll take a picture of me with this, because someday if, when this doesn't work out, you know, because I, I just came into it, and I was like, you know, someday when this doesn't work out, maybe I'll write a book or something and make money. But so I go to the bank to cash it, and the teller is just like looking at my account, looking at me, <laughs> looking at my account. And oh yeah, I had a, an unemployment check on, underneath it too. <laughs> so he's like, he's like, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know to bring the bank president out to shake your hand or to call the police. <laughs> and, and you know, I had like four non-sufficient fund charges right before that and, and all this stuff. So they held the check for 90 days. Oh. You know, and, and they didn't know Google and Schmoogle, whatever, you know, so. This was, <clears throat> so that was, so basically then Google put me on the speaking tour, because what a great story. I was fat, I lost weight, and I quit smoking, <laughs> I got married, all thanks to Google, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> the, the thing was, though, is very quickly I discovered that all these people that were placing ads on my site through Google were doing it for affiliate marketing, right? They were marketing mobile affiliate offers, so ringtone offers, you know, all this other stuff, selling, you know, cell phone parts, cables, stuff like that on my site. So I'm thinking like, okay, if Google's getting a cut of that and they're paying to advertise on there, then they're making a margin, then I'm going to try to go direct, right? So I approached, I actually followed the trail of the money. So I followed, you know, the actual thing and, and a lot of them led to ringtone offers, which were very lucrative, which basically paid you like 20 bucks when somebody would sign up to get free ringtones. Right. So, needless to say, um, the site quickly converted into an affiliate website, and I became very quickly like the number one affiliate for a lot of the ringtone properties. And in that site, this and, is 2006 now. Yeah, this is still early days, 2006. Um, so I followed that. I learned how to do pretty much, and then I got into pay-per-click marketing to promote affiliate market or promote the affiliate offers more. And, and on my blog, I was, I've always been very transparent. I started the blog in 2003, written over you know, 2,700 posts or whatever. But, so I, I, cr I said, you know, I'm gonna take 40 grand and I'm gonna put 10,000 in each of these accounts. And I'm gonna chronicle everything I'm doing and testing and whatnot. And it was the dumbest thing I ever did because people did, I actually <laughs> lost money at the beginning and then it turned out to be $100,000 in profit. People stole exactly what I did, not stole, you know, but just did exactly what I did and completely wiped me out of the market because it was completely saturated, right? Because everybody and their brother did exactly what I showed them how I made money. So that cost me a bit, but actually gained a lot of credibility. So um, the, after the, you know, so I learned, I learned how to do a lot of pay-per-click and really leveraged that and then, you know, actually thought, why don't I take some of this capital and, and build my own advertising network? you know, which built around affiliate offers. So eBay has a very lucrative affiliate program. And so I started a company called Auction Ads, which was an advertising display network built around the eBay affiliate platform. And so basically like within four months, we had 25,000 active publishers. Um, How did you get those publishers? What did you do? So that's, <clears throat> that's um, I think, what is, was really kind of a, a good takeaway for a lot of people is actually the, the way, because that's what I always get from people, is how the hell did you get 25,000 active publishers within four months? And so basically, and this cuts down to the basic premise of one of my company's mottos, is we have to be willing to do what others are not. So in this situation, what I did was is I said, everyone who signs up and implements the code today, or when you sign up, I will deposit five bucks in your auction ads account. Our minimum payout was 10, right? So I knew that by the time somebody in our margin was about 35%. So I knew by the time somebody had made $10, our minimum payout, we were going to get back to even, okay? Another thing I did was I said, you know, for anyone you refer who becomes an active publisher, you'll get 2% of whatever they earn. You know, we'll pay that on top of that. And those kinds of incentives <clears throat> just naturally led to the virality, didn't you do anything else? No, that's, that's really all I did. I didn't pay for any advertising. Well, another thing I did do is I reached out to like Mike Arrington. I said, you're running Google AdSense. I don't know what you make a month, but I'll pay you 10% more. And I went to all these like, you know, I tried to do market penetration in each one. I went to like the biggest UFC site and I said, I don't know what you're making from Google AdWords. I'll pay you 10% more. And I knew that as soon as I did that, all their competitors 
would run it, right? Because they were like, oh shit, you know, you know, TechCrunch is running it. They must be making a killing with it. I'm gonna run it. So then Mashable the next week ran it, you know, I mean like it was pretty funny. So that was really the premise, you know, of getting all the publishers. And, and you have to realize like publishers in the advertising space are super lazy once they're making money. People fire up Google AdSense, it's fire and forget, you make money with it. So the hardest part is getting people to actually change, to implement your code. And that's why by paying people five bucks just to implement it, the odds are that they're gonna change it ever are very small. So that was, that was really the key to getting 25,000 members. Um, the other kicker is within the same four month period, we got up to over two million in revenue and, were, and we exited. So four months, 25,000 users, active users, two million in revenue purchased. By and who late, bought that business? Late, so it was late capital out of New York City. Okay, so you sell that business, this is what year now? This is 2007. And then where do you go from there? <clears throat> so then um, I have a big passion for, uh, I still have you know, my site Nextpimp, which is, bring, is my Next mobile pimp? site. Yeah, so th this is a, a kind of an interesting thing too, is when you come up with a domain name, kind of think long term, because <laughs> Nextpimp was pimp out your Nextel phone, okay? So I didn't know that it was gonna go the direction it did. I mean, I guess it works, so whatever, but I probably would have chose a different name now than I did at that time. I pimp. Yeah, something, I guess. I don't, I don't know, you know, but it was always weird because my, I mean, people would say like next, my attorneys, everyone, pimp, next pimp, you're the next pimp, like what the hell is that? <laughs> And, you know, and I had, just as I, I also had owned macosx.org at the time because when Mac was talking about doing that, my mother-in-law, who doesn't, this, who doesn't have any technical ability, called it Macox. <laughs> <laughs> and no matter how many times I corrected her, she always called it Macox. So <clears throat> I'll forever call Mac OS X Macox. I just think it's funny. So, but so, yeah, so I started a, I bought a site called fighters.com. It's when the economy declined. I got a great deal on the domain. It was a bad mistake because I had no business in that area. Um, but I was able to, to sell that for more than I paid for it. So pretty fast turnaround. Um, and at this point, you're still doing all this by yourself. You have no organization or? Me and one other, I have an hourly employee who's 20 bucks an hour this whole time. Okay. Never, I didn't even outsource anything at that point. Um, so I had a programmer at 20 bucks an hour. Um, actually, I'll change that. When I sold auction ads, I actually, sent him over a million bucks because I thought that was the right thing to do. <clears throat> and he was a $20 an hour programmer. And again, part of my company's motto is doing what others won't, right? So I thought, you know, I want to keep this kid vested. I'm going to wire him a million bucks, you know? And so overnight he became a millionaire. So, cause I wanted, you know, I wanted him to be with me for the long haul. He's not, but you know, that, <laughs> <laughs> that um, it didn't work out how I thought it would because then he took the money and invested in a lot of other things and really could care less about what we were doing. But that's what happens, you know, and I took a chance and missed, but whatever. So, you know, but in the affiliate marketing space, um, we, we started to do, about that time, we really got heavy into the dating vertical. And we just, we built a lot of properties around dating and, um, we, we were approached by a couple kids who were doing it pretty much 24 seven. We hired them to, because we, when you advertise on Facebook a lot, you have to, and especially globally, start and stop ads at different times. And we just really blew it out to the point where we were spending about $90,000 a day um, on Facebook advertising. We were their what biggest. What year is this now? This was 2009. Wow, so they were even that early on Facebook, you were spending that much money. Yeah, 2009 going into 2010. Okay. So, yeah, and we were, and that's when Facebook brought me in to, because they, they really had no clue about affiliate marketing, right? And so we were running, and, and I mean, I'm talking about things, but I'm always doing, as you know, 10 different things at the same time, right? So um, we were doing a lot of affiliate offers, but they actually gave me a lot of leeway and they brought me in and they formed this little board of monetary advisors, right? And so each person kind of represented a different niche and I was the affiliate guy. So I would come in, you know, once a month and look at the affiliate stuff. Cause they, they really didn't know. They're like, okay, this guy's got this page, but what's he really, what's his motive here? And what's he doing? And this is bad for our people. And you know, so they just didn't get it. So it was, it was interesting to work with them and, and see what they were doing. Um, 
So, you know, we, we did really well with the, the dating vertical, so much so that a lot of the dating companies would come to us direct and just shut down their affiliate program and just had us as their only affiliate. Because, I mean, the, the funny thing is, is when we were spending $90,000 a day, I had like a $130,000 limit on my credit card. So we were wiring an Amex every morning to cover it and repaying it and, you know, getting back. So that's, that's a great problem to have, but it's a nutty problem to have as well. And these well. were all into dating offers. Yeah, let's, those let's, were. Let's, let's dive into this a little bit more. Yeah. So there'd be some dating site like a Match.com or something like it. Yes. And they'd give an affiliate bounty. So they'd say, if you get a registered user, we'll pay X. Right. And was it, for, was it for the basic free registered user, or did they actually have to sign up and pay for the service? It was for per free user. So it per was, free um, user. And how yeah. much would they pay out <clears throat> per free user? So the, the best one and the one that we did the most revenue with, um, we were doing about $3 million a month with was Zeus, which um, some of you probably see in the TV commercials. I think they're VC-backed out of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And they were paying us something like eighteen dollars for per free sign up. Per free sign up. Wow. And was that a direct? Was that just something a deal that they had like in an affiliate network, like Commission Junction or Google Affiliate Network? That or was did direct. You work, so you called up and said, "Hey, I want to work out this direct." Deal. They called me. Okay, they called because you. the thing was is we were doing it through a company called Neverblue, which is an affiliate network, and we were doing so much revenue through them that. They, the Zeus kept telling them, slow down, slow down, Got because it. the problem in the affiliate space is there's a ton of fraud. And as you can imagine, when it's a free sign up, there's no one really stopping somebody from making a bazillion fake accounts. So they would go to them and they would be like, this one guy, this one ID, like all his traffic is great. We've never had one, you know, fake thing. And they're like, who is it? And well, they wouldn't tell him. And then one time through a mutual friend, I said, yeah, we're, so then Zeus would like immediately called me as soon as they okay, found so out. Okay, so Zeus and you work out a, a deal that. They'll pay you $18 a bounty for a free sign up yeah. for someone just to join their dating community. Yes. And then, so then you start buying ads on Facebook and then talk about that experience. Do you, comp do you buy traffic into their landing pages or did you build your own landing pages? How did that work? We built custom ones on their property. So, okay, so you, you they said, sucked. give us a URL. Yeah, yeah, so they sucked at conversion. So let's start off with the landing page. What, yeah. well actually let's start off with the ad, okay? Okay. So, and you and I talked about this before, but what was the headline of the ad? What was the image of it? What, what did you do different in those Facebook ads, both in the ad themselves and targeting, that at the time made that ad get such a high click-through rate? Yeah, absolutely. And um, being this is uncensored and whatnot, I'm happy to share you know, exactly what we did. So uh, number one, um, you know, we, we actually, there's, there's a, I actually did a whole presentation on this on Philly Summit, but... Um, which is online, but, but basically, like Google years ago did a, did a study, and I worked for Millward Brown, so I had friends there who shared this with me under the table, and they actually had a 1,000 people come in, guys and girls, and they had them go through web pages, and they followed what they clicked on, right? And this was when they were about to implement image ads within Google AdSense. So what they found was the number one thing that people clicked on was females, right? Just the number one thing, guys and girls both. The second was ads that are recognizable brands. The third would be ads that blended in with the page. Okay, so <clears throat> I did, um, you know. So basically, we we had already known that. Obviously, the in the industry, there's a phrase, "chicks get clicks." Okay, so we hired some models, um, big chested models that were um, tight clothes, but not nothing revealing. Um, just like soccer mom in the park, turn smiles, you know, and we. We basically just got you know hundreds of these. We would hire local models and just you know throughout the country we would we would buy some stock photography if there was available. But a lot of times we had to actually hire them and take the photos ourselves. So, so that was the the biggest key. Like that exact image, and I've actually shared those with people. Our exact ones that we used, mixed with um, headlines that really are good call to action. What would be some of the headlines? So the headlines that we did, which were very cutting edge on Facebook at the time, was like view my images parentheses twenty. Right, so then people would, you know, click on that, and what a lot of people don't realize is, is um, Facebook operates in the back end off of what's called uh, cost per thousand impressions. Right, so they know what they should earn every time an ad sees a thousand impressions. So even though you're paying on a CPC or a cost per click model, it has to back out to their um, what they consider CPM. Right, so when we we were actually paying. 
five, three to five cents per click because we got so much clicks. And you have to keep in mind, usually in the dating vertical, people pay about 80 cents. But we had it so dialed in and it was so good to the point where Facebook actually, um, they have on staff foreign people who will translate your ad and actually. And then were you just using their out of box tools to do the, the targeting or did they give you any access to an API to do any more kind of advanced targeting? They, they ha the, the API was very barbaric at that time and it was not very trustworthy. Um, so we did, they let us upload mass CSV files where actually we would just send them a CSV with all the images, all the headlines. I mean, because you have to test everything every which way. And, um, you know, and so we, we were just constantly doing images, constantly doing headlines. And, and really that's the key is, I mean, the number one thing you can do is the image. I'll tell you right now, no matter what you're doing on Facebook, the image is the most important thing. The headline is by far the second most important thing. The body text barely matters. I mean, and, so what, and I, what are what are some other images? Like, what are just some other anecdotal images that you've seen work really well, and/or headlines for different products and services? Like I said, recognizable brands. So when we were doing, you know, like a Husker thing, which we might talk about later, um, we, you know, we would use the Nebraska Corn Husker logo, you know, and that draws people in. It's a recognizable brand to them. Um, you know, when you're doing like weight loss stuff, some people, not saying me, would use like Oprah's face to promote it. Um, she sued a lot of people about that, so I just want to say for the record, I'm not saying that I did that, but, um, you know, or like Rachel Ray, she was a big proponent of um, Asai Berry weight loss stuff, so a lot of people used her image because she endorsed it, right? And so it's like, use the supplement Rachel Ray uses. Well, I instantly people were drawn, and actually, it's, it's funny, and I was just going to say this, because one time on accident, we did the body text in Korean in America, and it got the same click-through rate. So it was just... <laughs> I'm telling you that the image is everything. I mean, literally. And I even did like a whole click tail study and, and stuff too, but. So I want to jump to some of the examples, but is there, so after Facebook, do you want to just kind of complete the, like really quickly complete the story of, you know, from 2010 to today, any other major milestones? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. We, you know, we went on to, after we, we continued doing all this stuff, I got the revenue coming in from, from NextPim, and then I had a, a great offer in 2010 to sell NextPim. Um, which I sold to a ringtone company at that time. Um, so that was another decent exit for us. And then I, that's when we started Shoe You've never once raised money, right? No. You um, don't even have any partners except your wife? Yeah, I don't. And, and I, I really don't like her too much involved either. <laughs> but um, so you started the Shoe Money system, right? Which started teaching other people how to yeah. be successful. Yeah, so that's, the first we did Shoe Money Tools, which was basically utilized a lot of our research tools. Um, so we did Shoe Money Tools. Um, that took off really well. It still does really well today. Um, we have like a, a one-click easy, you know, AdWords thing that um, people pump. I think last month was over $2 million, you know, using our tool into Google AdWords. So uh, a lot of people use it, um, and then we came out with, we had a company approach us and said, you know, all these guys are making these products to try to teach people how to do affiliate marketing and, and in general to, you know, do local marketing and mm -hmm. all this stuff, and, and it's just junk. It's just a bunch of PowerPoints and PDFs, and they don't know what they're talking about. You should do it. So, so we did it. You know, we did the Shoe Money System is what it's called, and it's basically our philosophy and our way to, um, our thought process, and, and basically walks people through real examples and all the way You've through. You've got this email list that you now use to promote <clears throat> your products, right? Where did you build up the email list? And was it from all the different businesses you started? It's, it's actually all from the blog. Oh, and, really? Yeah, and from the tool stuff and from, you know, some How of the large is your email list? It's about close to 700,000 now. And when you do a launch of a new product in the first 24 hours, like, what's the range of what you'll make? Well, the Shoemoney system was around 2.8 million um, on in the, the first 24 the, hours. The first 24 hours. And then subsequently over the next. You know, and how much how much were you selling the shoe money system for? That we originally priced it at two hundred dollars, you know, a month. It was a subscription. The content was dripped in, so it was like phase one, phase two, phase three, um, and that and was. So you're saying over the lifetime value, the first twenty four hours that you made. That was actually, actually well. That was actually when we launched it at the two point version. So the first version lifetime value was about four million, like at the two hundred dollars a month price point. The actual product launch when we did the 2.0 version of the Shoemoney system, which was you get all the content up front, you get the DVD set, it's all updated. That one. So I, I just want to try to get yeah. a frame of reference here. So 2003 to 2005, you're still on unemployment. You start your first business. Yeah. You were in debt at the time. Yep. 
like in that time, I mean, it sounds like there's tens and tens of millions of dollars that you made in these businesses, right? Yeah, in gross revenue, yeah. I mean, like for the the Facebook advertising stuff, you have to understand there's there's a small margin there, right? Mm -hmm. So on you know it was like a twenty percent profit margin, you know, on that. So that was I mean it was sizable, but yeah, I mean we generated you know probably close to I would say I probably generated probably close to fifty million. So so last thing the, before we go into the examples, like what makes you different, right? Like. If you're saying that, hey, I had no special education, I wasn't even from, at least what you're saying, necessarily always motivated, what was it that separate, I mean, it's certainly more than just luck and timing, because it wasn't one event, right? You, whatever happened with the wallpaper, you've replicated that success many times over across many different things. So what is it that separated you? And if someone's sitting here in the audience and they're like, well, how can I do what Jeremy did and make the, you know, the money that he's making? What makes you different and better than everyone else that tried to be successful in affiliate marketing? So the, that's a great question, and I have actually a pretty easy answer for it. Um, and it's part of our just our company mantra and motto is we, one, as I talked about, we do what others are not willing to do. Um, and that, What's one or two examples so, of that? So, yeah, so number one would be hard work, right? But that's fairly simple. Um, and that's probably, I'm not, I wouldn't classify myself as a hard worker. Um, it's more like my, of my wife's alley. Um, number two is really to be, you know, is like to push the boundaries. You know, I mean, like morally, ethically, legally, you know, I mean, when you, it's just the way it is, right? So in affiliate marketing, you know, and, and that may sound evil, but I mean, look at Apple, Steve Jobs, how he started. Look at Microsoft, how he started. I mean, look at, these guys were willing to do what their competition wasn't. With auction ads, I was willing to do what my competition wasn't. And with affiliate marketing, a lot of times I really push the boundaries. The ringtone industry, I mean, shit, a lot of the content on my site, I was getting DMCA's to the point of like 50 a day, you know, I mean, to take down content. That thing was a legal nightmare. How, how many people have you helped become millionaires by teaching them affiliate marketing and seeing them their path? I mean, every time I go to a conference, I would say probably, you know, a dozen or more people, you know, just in person. I mean, I get a lot of emails of people and I have tons of testimonials and stuff, you know, if we ever want to use them for stuff. But, you know, it's one thing to get emails and hear stories, but to meet people face to face. I've had people like bring their whole family to an event to meet me and say like, you're the reason, you know, that I was able to quit my day job. We were to buy the house I always wanted and all this stuff. And I followed your guide to do Gotta this. Or, yeah, it's really awesome. I mean, it's super rewarding, you know. All right, so let's jump into some examples. We'll call this like a mini speed round. Okay. And let's take about the next, you know, 15 minutes or so, and let's go through four different examples of stuff you've had a lot of success in of affiliate marketing. Um, it can be, we'll, we'll mix it up between products you've created and wanted to distribute, other people's products that you've done, um, and even if you know of other really successful stories, and we'll go through each of these pretty quickly just to kind of give a frame of reference. So, uh, why don't we start off with the Nebraska story you were telling me about last night dinner? Yeah, so one of the ones I really killed it in, and basically this is recently, right? Or? Recently, and any one of you guys could do this. I mean, this is so dead simple. Um, I started. So one of the other things I like to say about affiliate marketing is we kind of exploit people's passions for profit, which sounds really evil as well, but whatever, right? So it is what it is. People in Nebraska, all we have is the Cornhuskers. It's like. You know, it's all we got. We don't have any pro teams. People are nuts about Nebraska Cornhuskers, and they follow it. They know every statistic ever. So I created this Nebraska Cornhusker quiz, right? And what's, what's the core offer, though, by the way? What are you eventually selling or have to get somebody to sign so, up for? So, yeah, so basically you score the quiz, and depending on what you scored, you've won a free trial to Netflix. So it's for Netflix. You were trying to drive yes. customers so to Netflix. So it's the Cornhusker quiz sponsored by Netflix, right? So if you scored in the... 90 percentile, you want a free trial to Netflix, which of just course... Just real quick, did you, is this a direct deal you did with Netflix first off, or did you just, so you just took their offer off of like Commission Junction or... Yeah, yeah, actually it's through Google Ads at the time, but it's on Commission Junction, it's on all these other things. Okay. So, you know, I get 35 bucks every time somebody signs up for a free trial on Netflix, right? So... so and, the, and let's just pause for a second. So there, there are networks that aggregate affiliate deals like Commission Junction, like the Google Ad Affiliate Network, what are the other popular, popular ones? Um, the main ones are like the rock solid stable ones would be like ClickBank, um, yeah. Share a Sale, Commission Junction. Commission Junction is obviously publicly traded under Value Click. Um, and then there's the CPA networks, which is once you kind of graduate from the mainstream ones, you get the much higher payouts through the CPA. They have a much What more. are some of those? So like um, Azugal Ads, Never Blue, Ads for Doe is probably my favorite right now. Um, it was built by right. an affiliate. And those are companies like us, Doc, Stock, that understand a lifetime value of a customer and you know so we'd say hey if you can sign up somebody to a free trial doc stock will pay you 
$20, $30. We place this offer on one of these networks, and then affiliate marketers like you pick the offers you want and then do whatever you need to do to drive those signups, right? Right. All right. So we got that set. Um, you, you're driving customers for Netflix. And so the Cornhusker quiz. Cornhusker quiz, yeah. So if you score in the, you know, in the top percentile, then you get to challenge your friends and all this stuff and show off your thing. And, and so just by doing that, and you also could, you know, we had it hooked into Gmail and Hotmail and all these things, and so you could spam all your friends your score and challenge them. And it's just, it's so, it's such a religious cult following for the Cornhuskers that just viral traffic. I spent less than $100 to get it started, and it was getting like 300 to 400 Where were you buying the traffic on? Facebook just, or Just on started on Facebook targeting Cornhusker fans. Okay. I mean, how easy is that, right? Could anyone could it do this? It takes a little website that's got this quiz? Yeah, just and I got the I ripped the quiz off from some quiz site, you know, about Nebraska Cornerstone. I mean, literally, the site took me less than twenty minutes to make, right? Literally less than twenty minutes. You know, between us, it didn't even matter what you said on the quiz. I didn't calculate anything. I just said you won a free trial on Netflix, right? And so, <clears throat> and so, folks were sharing this quiz with other people to see if they did better on the quiz than right. And it really didn't matter, you know. Like I said, it didn't. It just it would give you a score, and it was always in the top ten percentile. So, <laughs> so that's and then they could show off, right? So they would post it to Facebook, like oh, I'm the man, you know. And they would challenge all their friends, and then they would come and do it. And super simple. I mean, how how many people did you get taking this quiz? Over the course, I mean, of about six months before Netflix, so I didn't like it. Um, it was, I mean. I think we generated about half a million dollars in revenue, in profit from in it. In profit. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, Netflix just had a beef with the saying it was sponsored by them and they were a Got part it. of it, which it was, right? I mean, it was actually, I mean, technically, but this is a, this is a great example of you have to be willing to do, I mean, most people would have been like, oh, they're going to sue you, they're going to do this. How much total blah, blah. did you invest to set up that entire website quiz and marketing? A hundred bucks. I mean, I, I made it in about 25 minutes. You know, but I mean, I don't want to act like I always hit a home run. I probably made 20 different stupid things like this, you know, that don't work. And then you have one that works and one that this one worked really well. But, you know, what, what I should have done is made one for every school in every part of the country. You know, the, the whatever quiz sponsored by Netflix everywhere. But, you I know. Mean, you're but, giving this, you're, like, I think you're repeating the same thing that you did in your blog five years ago where it's like, I can already see a couple of people are like getting ready to leave here. <laughs> And start coding that site. No, I mean, absolutely. Anyone who knows what people are passionate about, right, create something that they're going to invest themselves in and prove that they know more than their friends who are in the same thing. And I always say, like, the, the affiliate offers that do really well are ones that you can invest people's time into, mm -hmm. right? So the Cornerstone quiz is very well because people are going through this whole thing and they're going this and it's, and it's um, I mean, it, it, it's kind of a whatever it is, but it's kind of like, like if you're a single guy at a bar and a girl comes up to you and says, hey, let's go to bed, right? You're going to be like, whoa, what is going on? But if you sit there all night, right, and you buy drinks and whatever, and then at the end of the night, you've got a lot more time invested and the reward is a lot more, right? I know it's a fucked up analogy, but whatever. <laughs> so <clears throat> I don't know why I always use that analogy because nobody ever thinks it's funny but me. So, but basically that's... I would that's, just think if you're a single guy at a bar and a girl says, let's go to bed, you're like, let's go to bed. <laughs> Well, this is a married guy for 10 years now, so uh, you know maybe I'm, I'm, I'm a little out of it. So, yeah. okay, whatever. So the whole point is that when people have things invested, the reward of winning a free trial to Netflix is that much more enticing uh, than if I just would have said, hey, guess what? Trial. Here's a free trial to Netflix. We would be like, well, well you so know. So it's the idea that you've you know, built commitment into some kind of process, and then whatever happens at the end of that commitment is worth more. Right, so you've earned it. You've earned it, right? You've, all right. So right. example two, let's try to Example two, um, and this is one that made quite a bit more revenue and is, I think, a great example of where I've evolved in the affiliate landscape is uh, Free SEO Report. I started a site called Free SEO Report. I invested $3,000. What year is this? This is 2011. It's okay. 2012 now. Yeah, 2011. So last year, Free SEO Report. Um, I launched By the it. way, in, for 2011, <clears throat> uh, Jeremy was named by Fast Company the most influential personality online and beat out even folks like Shaq. So obviously something you're doing is getting the attention of people. Yeah, which is, if I could just quickly explain that. Um, so they had Shaquille O'Neal entered and Kobe Bryant and like literally tons of celebrities. I'm the last person they wanted to win this thing, right? And the thing was, is it was just a con, all it was was to find out who's the most influential person on the internet, right? And so I'm like, all this, all you had to do was you had to get people to complete this action. 
So I sent out an email to you know, 700,000 people and I said, look, Fast Company has said that if you go and sign up here, they will put your face in their magazine. And I said, let me explain the value. You're gonna be forever, no matter what you sell, you're gonna be able to say as seen in Fast Company magazine. Just saying that to 700,000 people drove so much freaking traffic to get so many people to sign up. And Fast Company, like, like one of those collages, right? Where they oh, yeah. <laughs> and my picture was like this big, right? And then like Shaq's like this big, like on the side. <laughs> so they were like, you got like literally, and then the thing is everyone that they recommended and they recommended and they recommended. So like, you know, I, I had like, like literally like 90,000 or something like that. And, and you know, Shaq and I Justine had like 3,000. and You know, she was whining about it, but she's a sweetheart, but whatever, you know, so. <laughs> The whole, the whole point of the story is all that was is like an affiliate lead generation yeah. thing. This is what I do for a living. Like you tell me that you need an action completed and you're going to put me on the cover of your magazine, then the, done. You know, so I thought it was funny because the top five people of this thing were all internet marketers, right? Of this, it's like, so, all right, so that's how I became the most influential person on the internet, all right? But we do have a lot of influence, right? I mean, internet marketers, when you have a list of 700,000 people, you write a compelling story of why you should complete this action, you're gonna win, okay? So, free SEO report. So, free SEO report, I, I came up with this idea of, I'm gonna make a free website, because, you know, I, SEO, I feel, is kind of a little snake oilish, and I feel like, you know, there's very basics to SEO, you know, and, and in Jason's video in the Doc Stop Act, he do, goes over the basics very well, and, and so anyway, Basically, I paid a programmer like three grand, Al Lafia, um, my favorite guy, and he and he wrote this thing in two weeks. We put up the site, and so basically, all you have to do is you enter your URL and your keyword, enter, and you get a email that says, you know, confirm this to get your report. So now you're double opted in, which means I can spam you, right? So, um, <clears throat> so then you go, you get your free report, and then if you want another report, you just have to refer one person, and you get another report, right? Or you can pay $10 and get another, another report or $20 a month subscription and get as many reports as you want. So what this, was in the report? And the report was just uh, basically like, um, you know, I, I, I love to talk from experience. And so like I kind of took that methodology. Got it. So the report's not customized to your domain. It's just general knowledge about well, SEO. What, what the report actually is, and if you go to the site, it's actually a really awesome service. Um, and, and basically what it does is it compares your site and the keyword you're trying to rank for versus the top 10 in every major search engine. And then it just tells you what you're doing different between what they're doing. So where are they getting their links from? The directories that are free. Where are they doing this from? What are they doing this? Are they putting this in their title tag? Are they putting this in their description? Blah, images, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So it's a, very, it's a very good comprehensive report that's very basic SEO that you know, a lot of people can take away from and take instant action on. So, Cool service, needed service, right? And um, I made an affiliate program for that. So now I'm on the advertiser side paying affiliates and I paid out 100%, okay? So if people signed up, paid 10 bucks. If people signed up for subscription, I paid out everything. I was paying out about four to, four to 5,000 on average a month. And so a lot of people look at that and be like, why in the hell are you do, you're giving this thing away for free and you're giving away all the money, but for every person that came in through that, they would refer, I think the average person on average would refer two people. Some people would refer 10, some people would refer whatever, but we give them free reports, right? So there was a compelling viral aspect to it. I never spent any money advertising it, I only spent money in the affiliate program. So here's where we made money with it, is one, it's, an SE, it's all people who are interested in SEO, right? So immediately, the first email I sent to them is a little educational thing about SEO. It's like, okay, you just got this great report. I know you're excited about implementing the SEO stuff that we just sent you, but first thing you need to do is you need to measure what impact it's gonna have on your site. Because you can implement all this SEO, but if your users don't like it and they leave, and you're not accomplishing your goal, then that sucks. Here's a great service that'll measure that for you. And you know, I get like 50 bucks every time somebody signs up for that service. Second email is like, you know, hey, I've got this great deal with HostGator. You know, they're sponsoring this. If you sign up, I will set up a site for you that's fully SEO'd out and do this stuff. And of course, I get 100 bucks. They took care of all that other stuff, right? So now the lifetime value of the customer through this 20 email sequence is about 150 bucks per person. And this is after, so it's just acquiring the user, giving them value, and then giving them offers that because they're so qualified in the SEO space, they're looking for SEO products, 
you just find other SEO products, right? So we had just a whole litany of products. And that's kind of one of the basic like formulas of affiliate marketing, which is you do a free giveaway, you buy traffic to get people to do a free giveaway, you get their email, and then um, from there on, you email over a concentrated period of time, you build trust, credibility, add value, and then you offer a sell, whether it's third-party products your own, and I mean, is that the basic formula? No, yeah, exactly. And, and for free SEO report, um, again, it's kind of like, I owned it for four months, I grew it to 60,000 you know, users, which were all, a lot of people say they have users. These are double opted in users, right? So they're, you know, they're real people. You can really have permission to market to them because they're double opted in. And so it, for an SEO company who is buying leads, this is a machine, right? Because it's getting you know, 600 people a day on mm -hmm. its own without doing anything. So you know, an SEO company came along and purchased it for you know, mid high six figures. Um, so, uh, four months after I launched it, made all the money through affiliate commissions and then dumped it, cool. you know, so. Let's um, take a third example. Okay, so, you know, a third example of, I think, a big company, you know, would be um, who's really making a, a ton of money is, is Zynga, really. Um, you know, one of the, they're huge, and their whole model is, you know, completing affiliate offers. They'll give you a tractor, they'll give you a cool crops, right? And all they're doing is exploiting people's passions, right, for stuff. So really, in affiliate marketing, one of the biggest keys is you just need to figure out how to sell people the dream or just find out what they want. Mm -hmm. And you know, and that can come through, I know a lot of people here have their own startups or you know, are entrepreneurs and stuff like that. And a lot of you have this great database of people who want recommendations from you. I mean, they really do. And you, know, you can recommend products and most of them you can get a kickback from. I mean, I recommended a lot of products I didn't even know back in the day that I could have gotten paid for, you know, and kicking myself now for it. But, you know, I, I think that that's one of the biggest things about it. people, like I said, are not willing to do what others aren't. I mean, I've had some competitors who really crossed the line and I thought, man, they're going to get in trouble for that. And they crushed it. So and, what, what exactly was Zynga doing specifically? Well, Zynga, you know, they were, they were actually promoting offers that were like free trial plus shipping offers. Those things are about as bad for the consumer as anything because you will get into, like, you, you know, it's like, it's a free trial. Like, oh, I'll get a tractor because I'll sign up for this free, I'll just pay $10 shipping and handling and now I get, you know, these vitamins that are going to help me lose 50 pounds tomorrow, you know. And so they sign up for these weight loss offers. Well, then all of a sudden they're enrolled in a $100 a month thing. And then it also enrolls them because it also gives them a free thing for this and it enrolls them in a $20 a month thing for this. And, if it, and then they sell their leads to these other companies. And I mean, I would argue that Zynga is doing just a horrible, I know there was that whole thing on TechCrunch about him, but he was just scratching the surface. I mean, the. So let's take one of your, let's take one more of your products. So instead of now marketing someone else's, you build this info product that teaches people how to be a successful affiliate marketer. Yep. Walk us through what you do, a launch of that product, and how do you get lots and lots of people buying that product because that's one of the things we're going to do this year at DocStock, right? We're going to create really high quality info products on how to start a business, how to raise money, how to protect your idea. And, you know, we're going to need to be able to market this to, you know, millions of people and drive a lot of sales. So how, how do you do that successfully? So um, I can do it. I can talk about our new product that we're getting sure. ready to do and how we're going to launch that. So the key to, and I've been a part of product launches and, and a part of a affiliate stuff. I can just talk about this one that was called affiliate.com. And basically the, the, the deal behind it was, um, it, it was like the product was $2,500. It was to teach people affiliate marketing. It wasn't my product. It was another guy's. He gave me a 60% revenue share of the, of the price of it. So um, how much was it again? Uh, it was twenty five hundred. I don't remember how many I did, but I got one hundred eighty thousand dollars from him in commission and from sales and pushing his product. But the way that I did it was, I said I would give away twenty iPads to anyone who you know. I would randomly give away twenty iPads for whatever reason. Like that really, really exploded sales on his thing. And I also said because he has an event, I said you'll get to hang out with me, you know, at a, a VIP event and stuff. So. Let me divert for a second because it seems like one of the things that you do successfully is you've become a personality. You brand yourself as at Shoe Money, and one of the things I think why your list of the people that follow you, not just because of your persona, but this email list you have on your blog, you're constantly communicating to folks, right? You're emailing them, you're writing blog posts, you're being transparent, and you're constantly providing value so that when you offer or recommend something 
you know, it doesn't feel like you're just being marketed to. It feels like, okay, here's this person that I know that's actually recommending something. How do, what, is, what does a company do to replicate that? I mean, unless, how, do, how does a company that's not driven by a persona get that same benefit? It's, it's really hard, um, honestly. Like we just, we, Blue um, Electronic Cigarettes is one of our the people that we consult for. And for them, I really had, their CEO is an Australian guy and he's perfect on camera. Like he's a good looking Australian guy. He's like, I was like, he hates the spotlight. Absolutely hates it. I had to completely tell him like, look, as w you know, we're gonna implement this email sequence. The emails have to come from you. You've gotta be the personality. They have to connect with you. They're not gonna connect with the brand. Like when you can connect a personality with, with people and they can relate to you, then they're going to buy from you. And I think that's one of the keys to my success is like with the blog, I give people value and I have been since 2003. Like everything I've learned, if you go through the things, you will see my evolution. What's the URL again? Just... Shoemoney.com. Okay. So if you basically go through the blog from 2003 and read all 2,800 posts, you'll see like this whole evolution of somebody who was like, hey, the first post I ever made was like, hey, I met Paris Hilton in Los Angeles. It's just picture me and Paris Hilton. Like, that's honestly the first post I ever made. And then it goes on about, hey, this is kind of cool. I made a couple bucks doing this. And then it's like, and it just completely goes on to the evolution of the AdSense check to, you know, just my whole story and just documenting everything I've learned every step of the way. And the last product I did before diving this other one, I, I basically said, you know, I'm going to put on a webinar and I'm going to talk about this product and I'm going to sell this product. And so I had all these people show up. They watched the webinar. I explained the concept. And when I launched it, I had one phrase. And I said, you've seen the webinar. You know my stuff's awesome. Buy my shit. And that's exactly what I said on the button. It said, click here to buy my shit. And, and I sold $940,000 of that product and no affiliate, so it was all mine. I made the product in three weeks and we sold it. And so... That was the last one we did. It was called Affiliate Cash Tree. And it was really talking about how to capture users and monetize them long term, much like we did with Free SEO Report. All right, so let's switch from the examples a little bit. And what I want to do is I want to take kind of two situations now and walk through the ABCs of it. And we'll dive into more details. And then we'll open it up for questions. So let's assume that you want to be an affiliate marketer today. So just let's get a sense. How many of you have any interest in wanting to do affiliate marketing yourself to generate revenue? All right, so let's say you know about a fifth or a sixth of the audience here. So, um, so let's take somebody and find out what they do. Yeah, so raise your hands again if that's the case. Over here. Okay, so what are you, what are you interested in? Um, I've got a business, business information site. So basically it's like six up and all free. I mean, right now we've got about 2,000. But in that case, you're trying to promote your site. We're trying to see someone that wants to promote. It's a free site and then you get the traffic and monetize. What, what are the people interested in? Like what, what kind of people are they? So like for that, for that kind of person, do you ever survey those people? We're pretty new, so no, we haven't. So one of the big things, and this is something I was discussing with Jason the other day, is one of the things we do constantly is survey the people and find out what, can I, what kind of content would you be interested? We're looking at doing content to help educate people on X, right? So I'm not sure exactly what Jigsaw is, sorry. But it's, it's a collection of contact information primarily for folks in the sales industry. Okay, so like, you know, like maybe you were gonna do something with sales, right? And so if you were, there's tons of affiliate products for that, and so you could say, you know, based on our survey, you know, you can, people that answer the survey, you're gonna be able to segment them, right? Into this certain segment of people who are interested in being more educated about this. And then you can find a product, there's a bazillion out there probably to do with how to sell better, how to get free reports and all this kind of stuff, that have an affiliate program. And you can look through, find one that you really like and recommend that to them and generate revenue that way. So, so let's, let's uh, all right, so someone's interested in doing affiliate marketing. Would you recommend if they're a newbie that they just go do, an, uh, that they go to uh, a commission junction or a Google affiliate network or should they try to work out their own direct deal? Um, you, you've got to start really with, I would go to Commission Junction, Share a Sale, or ClickBank. Because okay. between those three, the, the, the barrier to entry is nil. I mean, you make an you account. Find an offer. Mo most of these offers are around one of three things. Around either dating, weight loss, or some, usually those categories. Yeah, right? dating, weight loss, um, how to make money online, how to obviously, make money online. is huge. Um, especially overnight, um, without so, doing any work. So, so how, do you, how, how do you know... How do you know which offer to pick? And then once you pick an offer, what do you start doing? So in ClickBank, it's, it's really cool because they actually have what they call gravity, an actual average 
customer per click and per payout. So they actually have like this huge thing where they everything is rated by how well it converts, you know, how much people are making on average that promote it and all that stuff. So they have this whole gravity score. So that's a great indication of how people do it. There's also a lot of forums, like there's a warrior forum it's called, warriorforum.com and stuff like that, where people will actually post and say, hey, I'm looking at promoting this or in this industry, because anyone recommend in a product? And a lot of people will chime in and help you. So that's, that's, a, that's a really good way to do it too. And the reason I recommend those three is, is like I say, the barrier to entry is, is very small. And if you just want to get started in affiliate marketing, Amazon is awesome. I mean, just if you have an Amazon account, you have an Amazon affiliate account. You just need to go to the affiliate thing, say, yes, I also want to be an affiliate. And then anytime you refer somebody to Amazon, like let's just say your friend is talking about OPI nail polish, whatever. And you can say, hey, I f look on Amazon. This is super cheap. And it's got your little refer thing. You not only get 8% of what they bought right there, you get 8% of anything they buy on Amazon for the next 30 days. Right? So one of my most on my site, I have one blog post that talks about movies that motivate me, you know, and it's, you know, just basic lists, like Boiler Room and all this stuff. And I've made like over $65,000 from that post just from people clicking on the Amazon link and going there because the odds that people are going to go there and just buy the DVD is pretty small. They're going to go there and buy a DVD and buy whatever else they want. And then for the next 30 days, they get 8% of whatever they bought, right? So that's a very small, if you just want to get started right now, you know, Email your friend about what you guys have recently discussed, or you know, I mean, you don't have to spam your friend. Uh, but what what creative things would you do once you pick up an offer to try to kind of break out of the pack and get some more usage? By the way, could we get the AC turned down just a little bit? It's, it's I think Jeremy I'm about to freeze up here. Uh, I'm from Nebraska, so. Oh, that's a good point. You can check. Thanks. Um, so, what clever things do you do once you once you pick the offer to kind of break out of the pack and be more successful? Again, you've got to be willing to do what others are not, right? So blur the lines a little bit, you know? I mean, like, in, in this industry, it's, um, and I want to, I want to, I'm going to not skip away from your question, um, but, I mean, in this industry, everything's evolving so fast, but the rules are being written as we speak in the affiliate marketing industry. The FTC is coming out with all these suggestions on what you should do and how you should handle it, and there's affiliate tax, which is coming out, which is specifically the affiliate nexus tax. The affiliate tax is already approved in three states. So the affiliate marketing business is going to drastically change in the next couple of years. So right now is the time to get after it. Um, with that said, you know, no matter what you do, you've got to kind of find a unique angle. So let's take the dating business, for example. Um, one of the things we had success with in the dating industry, and we, we recently ramped it up, is instead of sending it directly, and this is something I learned from the Free SEO Report stuff, was that instead, instead of sending the actual traffic to a dating site, we sent it to our own site, which was called Anna's Dating Tips, right? And so we gave out a free PDF, which basically was contained like the 10 top ways to spot a fake profile or whatever, right? So immediately you connected with this girl named Anna. She started giving you value and said, okay, today we're going to go to Mate One. We're going to sign up for an account, and I'm going to walk you through the specific mm -hmm. things that's going to do this. Well, guess what? We just got paid. So like day two was like a totally not selling, just a thing about you know what to watch out for. Day three, it was like, okay, eHarmony is so a little pick, bit different. You would pick an offer, and instead of sending them directly to that company's landing page, you would send them to some page that you create, build value over email marketing, and then through that email marketing, refer into the actual affiliate yes. links to the different dating sites. Because th there's the whole thing about it. A person has to interact. Like, So you show an ad on Facebook once. A person, they say, has to interact with something eight times before they make a buying decision, right? So the time, so the actual, like, if a person sees your ad on Facebook, the odds that they're going to bookmark your affiliate thing, well, they can't even do that. But the odds that they're going to go back through your affiliate link and get paid or not. So you're just one of the eight people. Hopefully, you're one of the eight that gets paid. On this deal, you're retaining the user, and you can continue to market to them repeatedly, right? And how much does this cost? I mean, how much should someone, how much money should someone expect to invest in this process to start to have some success? So what we're doing so far, we're seeing about twenty dollars per person because we're monetizing them several times, right? Because like on email four, it's like let's check out eHarmony, and the difference here is well, I, this. I'm just you saying, know? if you're just starting out as trying to be an affiliate marketer. What kind of budget do you think you should set aside before you can, because you're going to make some mistakes. So you if you want right? to jump into the dating space, the most competitive thing in the world, you're, you're going to need some capital, Got right? Because you're going to have to do a lot of testing. If you want to just start off in the ClickBank space, and I, I recently, I think I told you about, I spoke at um, 
a small school in Nebraska. I got on stage and of course the crowd wanted to know, how can they make money right now with affiliate marketing, right now? And they're trying to pin me down. I'm like, all right. So I bring up a girl. She logs into my Commission Junction account, grabs an insurance offer. We go to Craigslist in the forum and she says, I got this ridiculous quote from this insurance offer. Has anyone ever heard of it? Right? It pays $5 if people submit like three pages worth of stuff. Okay? So by the end of my talk, we had made $20. Okay, so that costs nothing to do. Now, I, I tried to pound in their head, like, this can't last. This isn't a sustainable model. Like, Craigslist is going to get pissed at you. This, you know, and, but the, I gave them, like, three other examples. of you could totally do that on relevant sites. There's all these relevant dating sites that you could, you know, make recommendations. You could do all kinds of stuff. So, so really, I mean, you don't have to jump in. And I also told them, I said, if this is what it takes to get you interested and get the the juice is flowing about affiliate marketing, then go for it, you know, then do it. Uh, how many folks here are interested in leveraging affiliate marketing for their existing company to drive more sales or customers? All right, so probably about equal to the first group. What, what's your recommendation for these folks? I mean, what do you what do, you do when you've got a website, you, you're selling something, you know some kind of CPA that you'd offer, you know something about your lifetime value. What do you do to leverage affiliates to make yourself more successful? Great question. So this is something that we've recently started to do, like consulting, going to companies who want to start their own affiliate program because we've done both sides. You know, we have insight into Facebook and all this other crap. So the number one thing we sit down with them, we say like, what is your goal, right? Because obviously your goal is to make sales, but maybe your goal is to get somebody on a lead generation list. Maybe it's to acquire them for something else. You know, like your goal at DocStock might not be right off the bat to get somebody into a subscription program. Maybe it's, you know, to get them to download the app, right? Maybe it's a different goal. But you've got to know your dollar value, like you said. You've got to know your dollar value on what that goal is worth to you, okay? Then what you do is you enter that and you say, okay, what percentage can we pay out? You know, well, I believe that, you know, you should have an unlimited budget for anything that returns a positive ROI. Would you agree? Yes. Okay. So basically at that point, we would introduce it to the affiliate networks, which... I have a good connection with and, and whatnot. The hardest thing to do is to get into, like you can get into Commission Junction, no problem. It costs you $5,000, they'll manage the program for you, and good luck getting affiliates, right? That's the hard part, is getting the affiliates to do it. So that's what we have to look for. And, and one of the key things I said before, you have to be willing to do what affiliates or what others, your competition is not. So by doing an affiliate program, you know, a lot of the things I've talked about that I've done, if you want to play the game and get affiliates, you have to come up with creative ways to get them. Um, I talked about, I promoted that guy's stuff, made $185,000. I also won a BMW X5 in that. I probably didn't make as much money from that as I could have, but for whatever reason, I wanted to win this goddamn X5 and just show everyone that I was the freaking man, right? And it was really gutsy for him to do that, you know, to throw up a BMW X5, right? So, but that was one of the things he was willing to do. I'm not saying you have to sell, a, you put up a car to the top affiliate, but if you want to, I mean, first of all, you have to build out your affiliate program, which isn't as difficult as it sounds. Um, but then you have to have, you know, somebody manage it. And that's why Commission Junction is appealing to people. Like I said, though, the problem with Commission Junction is that, how, I mean, there's just your competition of people who are doing exactly the same thing is probably pretty hard. And then how do you even get out of What if you want to go through a network? What if you just want to recruit a set of affiliates to, you know, go to work for you. What's the best way to do that? Is it meeting someone like you? And yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I mean, we're we're pretty selective, and, and it's got to be a good fit for us. But there's a lot of people. Who would you say are the other five best? Who are the five best affiliate marketers that you like and respect? Um, you know, I would I would not so much go for affiliate marketers as much as I would go for previous affiliate managers at companies because they're going to know affiliates, right? And that's a big thing. And they're also going to have relationships with all kinds of networks. I know two young ladies who have completely gone freelance. And they actually will go into, they'll set up the network. They'll actually recruit affiliates. They, they have relationships with every network um, or just direct, you know, like if you just want to do direct. And so um, we, we have a software platform that we set up for companies that's, that's we use ourselves and stuff. So usually they'll use that or whatever. And I mean, it's, it's not, it's honestly, not bad, and it's in. I just want to say that I've been on both sides of this equation. I've been an affiliate, and I've made companies a shit ton of money. I've been on the other side and made a lot of money with my own products. It's way better to have your own products because guess what? You get affiliates that are willing to risk 
money, resources, and time to make you money, right? And the best part of that is, is that you can withdraw it at any time, and you can take everything that you've learned that they've been successful with, and you can do it yourself. And that's what happens every day in affiliate marketing. So that's why you see, like, when I killed Zeus forever, they kind of shut us down, did exactly what we were doing. Well, they tried, right. but they weren't as good as us, so. All right. I wanted to thank you. You know, Jeremy, literally, I, I, we were talking probably three weeks ago, and I said, Jeremy, I'd love if we could get you in front of an audience here in Los Angeles. I know in Nebraska, um, but can I get you a ticket? Will you spend a couple of days? Will you do a session with us? Um, he did not get paid for this. You're not doing this for clients. He did this as a favor to us, but he also did it to try to help out a lot of people that here in LA are passionate about affiliate marketing and want to leverage it to make their businesses better. And um, I just wanted to say thank you so much for making the time for coming out here, for being as open and forthright as you always are and I'd expect you to be, and for hopefully helping the people here um, you know, on their path to you know, building the businesses they want with it. And uh, please, everyone, just join me in welcoming and thanking Jeremy. Thanks. Uh, and uh, the ticket prices, besides his travel and some other expenses, we actually have food uh, for everyone. We're going to get it set up in the next 15 minutes. So we'll break down the room, hang out here the rest of the night. Jeremy's going to be here hanging out, talking to people. So why? Everybody, thank you for coming out. And the one last big thing um, I do have to announce, is anyone from Ticket Mob here? No? Well, we got finally, after three years, the Startups Uncensored website actually built out. And it's more than just a website. It will actually be the platform going forward that you can buy the tickets through that. Uh, I'm going to do my best in the next 30 days to put a calendar of all the events for the year, as many as we know, coming up. Uh, on this site, it will have all the videos of our past events that you can go watch. So if you check out startupsuncensored.com, share it with your friends. Um, that's where you'll be able to see the past events and videos with Jeremy. It's where you'll be able to buy tickets going forward and we, where you'll be able to see the calendar events for the year. So everyone, thank you for coming out. Great seeing all my old friends. Nice meeting some new ones. And uh, let's have a good night. Thanks. <clears throat>